Hey everybody, this is Eric from MSP Mountain and I wanted to make this a video about why psychological testing of candidates might not get you the top tier MSP talent that you're looking for. Thanks for tuning in and this is an issue that's come up with our clients. Um, for those of you who don't know, I run a staffing company called Support Adventure and we provide global IT staffing um, for the MSP sector. And we've noticed that a lot of our clients want to use psychological testing to vet candidates and see if they're the right match for their company. And more often than not, I would recommend against this as you know, a strategy for figuring out if they're the right fit or not. And there's many more effective uh, tools that you can use, methods that you can use to figure out who are the best people that you can hire for your MSP. <clears throat> so, yeah, basically the psychological tests are supposed to profile the candidates so that um, the hiring MSPs or recruiters can know that, you know, they're the right match for the company and their culture and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I found that MSPs can get this wrong a lot. Now, one of the reasons that MSPs get this wrong, I think, is because the type of people first of all, um, that our talented IT technicians might not necessarily be um, that agreeable to being tested in this way, especially before they get an interview. I mean, maybe if it's like a last thing to just double check everything, it might be all right. But um, yeah, a lot of the people, you know, if you're told you're applying for a job and we want to psychologically test you to see if you're the right fit, it's a little bit dehumanizing. It's a little bit, um, seems antisocial on the part of the company. And a lot of candidates we've seen just don't want to do that. And, you know, the most talented people um, in the MSP staffing um, company that I run, um, that we present to our clients, they often um, have multiple offers and some of them would probably rather um, pick the, the company that doesn't want to psychological, psychologically test them, but actually have a conversation, actually find out who they are um, and find out you know, if they intuitively match with their company. Because us MSP technicians are very intuitive people with a lot of, um, you know, sort of vibe that we need to do our best work. Um, so the corporate environment, we've seen corporate MSPs that do things too much towards a rigid um, sort of way of looking at the work. They often don't get the best results, but the ones that make the MSP technicians feel valued for their personality, feel sort of like um, a part of the family, quote unquote, they can do a lot better. Um, and the other thing is like, you can often lose a lot of the best candidates um, before before you uh, interview them if you make them take the test because these people the most talented MSP people who can work at an MSP they actually have lots of options so if one company they're talking with has a great conversation with them right off the bat and one company is like no you have to take a psychological test it might be so off-putting and the company that treated them as a human being might be really really their first choice. So there is that. And we've also seen companies get it wrong with the psychological testing because these things are, are very scientific and I don't mean that in a good way. I mean that a bunch of uh, psychologists in a university or some corporate environment have profiled different people and these tests are almost never sort of adapted to the MSP environment and the skills that you need to actually succeed in it. Um, one of the clients that we saw do this actually disqualify candidates because they were quote unquote gaming the test, meaning that they were finding ways to look good on the test and finding ways to sort of hack the test. And I don't know about you, but people like that who are that innovative and that able to understand systems and how they work and get around them, that's kind of really close to the MSP skill set that you need to actually su succeed in the job, which is really like figuring out a system and how to sort of work with the system or against the system or have workarounds in the system. And it basically, yeah, it, uh, yeah, that's a great skill to have. And we've seen people disqualified um, because of that. And we've had those very same candidates have great success elsewhere. So I haven't seen any company that's using psychological testing actually from my perspective as the staffing provider, improve their success rate. 
Now, there are a bunch of different tests that you can use, like the Meyer Briggs or the disk assessment and all this sort of stuff. And I, I think that uh, they should only be used as a secondary data point, not as a primary, sort of like you have to get through this to go and succeed. Now, there's lots of other stuff that you can do that can make you see who's right for your MSP. And the first is the interview and the amount of rapport and cultural fit you can establish in the interview by building rapport. So if you're not vibing with the person when they talk about their values, their work and stuff like that, why would a psychological test tell you anything different? I mean, trust your intuition, trust that you know how to connect with human beings and sell the values of your company, sell the environment that you've set up for people to work and see how they respond. And there's more indicators there on whether they'll fit in your MSP than any personality test. Um, and also, I really believe in actually testing technicians and trialing technicians and having them show up on the job or a test environment that's similar to the job and showing what they can actually do. I'm talking about troubleshooting, I'm talking about ticket notes, documentation skills, all of that sort of stuff. And how can they communicate as well? Communication skills are huge. And you can see a lot by the way someone communicates. But I'm a firm believer that there's lots of different types of people who have lots of different skills um, in the MSP space. And by selecting these attributes um, for the sort of MSP environment by reading it on a psychological report of a person that's been generated from some multiple choice or some sort of test like that, it, it might not give you the full picture of how you can hire the best people. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, some of the best people might be alienated. The extra step might make, make you lose the best people because they have other op offers that are not doing that. And um, yeah, you should find better ways to actually emulate the job, emulate the environment, and then trial them. You know, have them shadow um, one of your best technicians for the day and see if they can vibe with that person and their approach to the tech, their knowledge and previous experience. And does that person think they're a good match? Have them, um, you know, write some mock emails to a customer and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, be careful when you're using um, psychological testings for MSPs, uh, staff hires, uh, because it might not be the most effective thing. Thanks a lot. My name is Eric. This is MSP Mountain. And, yeah, we also run this company, Support Adventure, which I mentioned many times in this video. Um, the link is in the description. Please uh, ensure that you check it out if you're looking for great MSP talent. We have a full training and testing program that does a lot of the heavy lifting to screen and vet candidates before they're ever presented to you. And um, yeah, then you can pick the ones that really, really will fit with the organization on an intuitive and on an informational and skill level and on the level of actually showing up and performing work on the job. Thanks for watching this video. I'll catch you later.